Hello everyone and welcome to BIW channel. If you find us for the first time, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with new videos from BIW. In this new video, we'll introduce the Azure Data Factory service in the Azure platform. So first, let's start by presenting briefly the definition of Azure platform and Azure Data Factory, then we'll go to a demo to see how it works. Microsoft Azure, or just Azure, is a cloud computing platform that provides access, management, and development of applications and services via globally distributed data centers. Microsoft Azure has multiple capabilities such as software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. Also, it supports many different programming languages, tools, and frameworks. In this video, we'll focus on Azure Data Factory. So Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based ETL and data integration service that helps you to create data-driven workflows to orchestrate data movement and transform data at scale. By using Azure Data Factory, you can create actionable business insights from your unorganized data. This allows you to make better de business decisions. Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based data integration service which allows you to collect data from multiple sources, then load this combined data to a location or destination suitable for data analysis. If necessary, you can transform the data during this process. Azure Data Factory is composed of six main components. Activities, a single process and step in a pipeline, we have three types of activity, data movement, data transformation, and control activities. Pipelines, a logical grouping of activities that perform a specific unit of work. Linked service, define the required connection information needed for Azure Data Factory to connect to external resources, such as a data source. Dataset, represent data structures within the data stores. Data flows enable to develop data transformation logic without needing to write code, which run as activities within the Azure Data Factory pipelines. Integration runtimes. An integration runtime provides the bridge between the activity and the linked services. These components work together to provide a complete end-to-end -end platform for users and data engineers. Now let's create our first pipeline and as example, we will move a file from a container in a blob storage to another container. So let's jump to Azure. Here I'm connected to the Azure portal and I have already created a storage account with two containers. The first one is source and the second one is destination. Inside the source container, we have a CSV file named sales data it contains some data about product subcategory, dates, and the amounts. It's the file that we want to move to the destination container, which is empty. Let's go to the Azure homepage to create a data factory. We have different options to create it. First, we can search Data Factory in the search area at the top center of the page, then select Data Factories and select Create. The second option is to select the portal menu, then select Create a resource. In the search area, look for Data Factory and select create or we can find the data factory based on the category we know that the data factory is an integration resource so we will find it there when we hit create we will be redirected to the configuration page we need to select the subscription resource group we can create a new resource group if you want to then give the data factory a name
We select a region. In my case, I'll choose France Central, which is the closest to me. Then the version of the data factory. So we filled in the basic fields. For the other options, we leave them as default. We select review and create. Then create. As you can see, the deployment is in progress, which will take a few seconds to complete. Now it's complete and we can click on go to resource to open it. The overview of the data factory resource is opened where we can find general informations like research group, type, etc. At the left side menu, we have many options, for example, change some settings or set alerts. But for this video, we're going to open the data factory and create our first pipeline. So select launch studio. We enter to the homepage of the Azure data factory studio. On the left side of the screen, you will see the main navigation menu. We see that Azure Data Factory consists of four main pages, Home, Author, Monitor, and Manage. The home page is our dashboard. From here, we can do some of the most common tasks. We can also use the Copy Data tool to copy data using a wizard experience, where you specify properties, source, destination, and it will create the pipeline for you. The author page is our main development environment. This is where we'll be spending most of our time during development, which we will use in a few seconds. The monitor page is where we monitor data factory. We can view the overview dashboard, monitor pipelines and triggers runs. The manage page to manage connections, source control, triggers, parameters and security. So let's go back to the author page. For now, we don't have any pipeline. We'll create a new one. Let's rename it. As we saw earlier, pipeline is a logical grouping of activities and we find them in this menu. We have the copy data activity, data flow activity, Azure function activity, and many more. Let's add a copy data activity to the canvas with a sample drag and drop. When we select the activity at the bottom, we need to add a source data set in the sync data set. If we select source, we can create a new source by clicking on the new button or we can use the menu at the left, go to datasets, then click new dataset. We need to select a data source. In our case, it is an Azure blob storage. Hit continue, then we select the file format. Those are the supported format. Because we only need to move the file, we will select binary, then select continue. Let's give it a name to our dataset and select a linked service. We don't have yet any linked service, so we will create a new one. We can rename it, add description. For the authentication type, we have many options. It is recommended to use managed identity and service principle, but for this video, we will use account key. For the account selection method, we can choose either from Azure subscription or enter manually to add the account name and key manually, but we will go with the first option where we select the subscription and the account name. We can test the connection to see if it works fine. Nice, now we hit create. 
Now we need to provide the file location to the dataset. We can select the folder icon to browse and select the file. We select OK. As you can see, our new dataset is created. Now if you go back to our pipeline and select the activity, then the source, we can find the dataset created as an option. So we select it. Because we're going to move the file to another location, we need to create a new dataset. So let's repeat the same steps. Let's rename it and select the created linked service. And choose the path. Now that we're done setting this up, we can test it by clicking on the debug to run the pipeline without publishing the modifications. As you can see the status of the pipeline run is queued. Now it succeeded. If we go to the blob storage, refresh it and select the destination container, we found our file. But what if we want to rename it? It's simple, we only need to add a name file in the sync dataset. Let's debug it again. If we check the container, we can see the file with the given name. When you finish your development, you can validate all to see if there are no errors, then publish your work by selecting Publish All. In this new window, you have a summary of your changes. Next, to schedule our pipeline, we need to go to the Manage page, select Triggers and create a new trigger. We can rename the trigger, select the type, in our example we select Schedule, and select a start date and the time zone. Now that we created the trigger, we need to associate it with the pipeline. Let's select the pipeline and at the top center, we select Add Trigger, then a New Edit and select the trigger, then hit OK. For these modifications to be taken into account, it is necessary to publish these changes. Note that we can also trigger the pipeline manually and see its execution in the monitor page. As you can see, and the pipeline runs, we find our pipeline in progress status. If we refresh the page again, we can see that it's succeeded. So that's it for this video. I tried to cover the main lines of Azure Data Factory and see how it works. 
in the next videos we will be able to see more in details i hope you liked the video and i'll see you soon in the next videos